we just have to record using the advanced filter once and then we adapt the code that we get from it okay so you, you can come to here record macro in the developer tab or you can even just click this button here at the bottom uh, macro one is the name that's fine because we don't care about that now so it's recording data advanced filter copy to another location now list range so before we had tables excel used to call this type of object lists that's why we have lists or date and i already have these as a table and uh, we need to select the entire table including the headers and in here we get sales which is the name of the table i will show you that and then in between square brackets we have the pound sign or the hashtag sign and then all meaning that i want the table all the table including the headers okay that's my data now my criteria my criteria is a set of cells they need to be all together and they need to include the names of the headers they can be repeated as we have here. We have date twice, that, that's okay. And we could have even just one field name there. Let's say I wanted to search just for client and I never needed to search for anything else. Then I can prepare my criteria interval or range with just that field name. In this case, I already have all these cells here prepared as range. I'll do this. So this is my criteria range. And finally, copy to is the range of cells to where I want to extract. And I need to select the cells to where I want to extract information from my data. And I need to indicate the names of the fields that I want to extract exactly as they are in my table, okay? select this and then okay so i have my results there i'm going to stop the recording so we recorded the advanced filter once so let's see now what the code is that we got and then how we can use that to our advantage so alt f11 or developer and then visual basic you come to here now we have a module this is the only code that the advanced filter needs and that the recorder gives us and if we see we have everything we need we have the range where we are going to perform advanced filter so in this range dot advanced filter okay what's the action i want to filter copy so i want to copy to another location that's what it means what is my criteria range it's in here from b6 to g to h6 to b5 to h6 okay and then copy to range j5 to m5 so everything is recorded the way we did it and it only takes one row of code it looks like two rows but it's in fact one row that sign here when we have a space and then underscore means it's all one row of code but because i don't want to keep scrolling doing like this when we do space underscore we can continue the same row of code line of code in the in the line below so we have what we need let me show you something here before i continue with the code if we go to formulas and then the name manager we have three names here that it are important for this example. So we have a named criteria, another one named extract and the sales. So this one is the table. Okay, I'll show you the table name in a minute. And this one, if I click here, it tells me that's the range there. So this name was automatically created by Excel when I was using the advanced filter tool. And the same thing for extract. So this name here, if I click in here, it's, it's referring to this cell range and the same thing. It was created automatically. And um, if we look into the scope, it's uh, a name that belongs to the sheet only the worksheet automate one which is our worksheet here and we could use it in our code if we want about the tables if i click here in the table and we go to table design we can see that in the table name field we have sales as name of the table 
Now we recorded the macro, you will see how easy it is to set this up. What we need to do is to put this code in what we call a worksheet event. What's that and, uh, and how do we do that? So you see here, and, and if you don't see this, the project VBA project, let's say this is closed. You can come here to view and uh, look for the project explorer or uh, hit control R that will also bring this up. Okay, that could happen that you could have this closed. And here we look for the name of our file and we see that we have all the sheets. Uh, these are the different sheets I have here. And the sheet list is, is in fact hidden. That's why I don't see it here, but we can see it in the VBA uh, editor. And uh, we have another element here for this workbook. In this case, I want to write this code in the sheet automate one events. So let me copy this, control C, and we come here where it says automate one. Then we come here at the top, we look for worksheet. By default, it prepares me to write a macro for the event selection change. This would be if I wanted a code, a VBA code to run every time I would change my selection. It's not what I want. We want to run a code every time I change. So here, I ch this is the list of all the events I can pick from. I will choose the event change. Okay. So I want the work uh, worksheet change. I don't want the selection change. So I'll delete this one. And here in the middle, I'm going to paste what we just copied from the other module. And let's do just a little bit of change, just one change. If I leave it like this, it will run the advanced filter every time I change something. So if I come here and just type something in one cell, it will run that code. It didn't do anything. We didn't see anything because I didn't change anything in, on my criteria. So the results of the advanced filter were exactly the same as I had there before. But uh, we don't want to be running code uh, when it's not necessary. So what we want to do is say, run this code only when the changes happen in this range here. And this range here is, we already know it has a name. It's uh, the name of this range is criteria, right? So I'm going to say something like this. If, and I can refer to the intersect of, and then I can say intersection of different ranges. And in here you see target. Target is the cell range where the change is happening. So if we intersect that range target with the range in our spreadsheet where we are writing this code that is named criteria, then, but this is not enough. So I need to say if this intersection is something, but it's easier in this case to say if this is not nothing. So that's how, how we write it. So if not intersection of these two ranges is nothing. Okay. So if the intersection, if in between these two ranges where we are making the change, which is the target, and where we have our criteria is, is not nothing, so it means it is something. So if the change is happening in the criteria range, that's what is, this all means, then I miss a parenthesis here. Okay, so if this intersection, and, and you see that everything looks good now because it adjusted some case mistakes that I have there, okay, and then here I could put everything in the same row or here I can put end if, uh, both works, okay. 
So if I if I put this there, then I don't need the end the end if. Otherwise, I do need the end if. I like to put that identity, so it's easy to read that this is inside the if and end if statements. See if everything is correct here. So sales all is the name of our table, and criteria range is this one. But I can also replace it with its name that is criteria. And the same thing for the extract range, I can also replace it with its name because the name already is already created, okay? There's only one final thing. If I select a lot of cells, maybe I don't want to be making, let's say I, I have a spreadsheet in this same spreadsheet, uh, there's a possibility of me making changes to a lot of cells at the same time, including here or outside, doesn't matter. Uh, if I'm making changes to more than one cell, I don't want their code to run. So if that's the case, I can say the following. If where the, the change is happening, it's the target, right? The target is where this event change is happening. If target, then the cells, number of the cells in the target, and then the count. So the number of cells that the target, and this is where the change is happening, is greater than one. So if I'm changing, more than one cell, then exit sub means don't run the rest of the code. Let's just exit, okay? And that's it. So doing this now, we'll prepare our spreadsheet to run. Let's test and see if this is working. If I delete the date, it reads what I have in my criteria and it's only sales rep, John, okay? If I delete John, it shows me everything, all my criteria, that is the 20, 20 rows or so that I have here. I believe it's 20 rows. Yeah. And in here, it shows me all the 20 rows because I'm not putting any condition in my criteria area. So if I'm saying, if I leave blank, I mean any client, any date, any product, any quantity, anything. So if you were building this tool for other people to use, then one good thing to think about is to write instructions, clear instructions so that people know how to use it, right? You need to tell them, well, if, if you want to search between dates and you want greater than, smaller than a certain date, then you need to use the greater than sign and then indicate the date like this. It could possibly happen that with your computer system, the date needs to be written a different way i'm not sure so you would have to test that you need to to write instructions to your users uh, to let them know how they can use this tool you can let them know about the blank how they can search for blank cells how they can use the wild card to search for partial portions of a string so in this case product everything that starts with an s that has these dates was sold in between these two dates so that's one thing another thing that i would recommend you to do would be to protect your sheet leaving only these cells unlocked so that people only type in here and you may need to use when you are protecting your sheet spreadsheet look online for something that says user interface equal true related to the sheet protection that will allow you to have our VBA to write in these cells even if they are locked, okay? So that's that. How easy is this? You can do it. It's uh, just one line of code. And let's, so let's, let's remember what we need to do. You click the record button, you perform the advanced filter once, then you come to Visual Basic, you find the sheet where you want to have the search happening and the results pasted in there and you write this bit of code. In fact, this piece of code is written for you by the macro recorder. You just need to write this row here and there and there. That's the only thing you need to do. Okay, so you just come to the video and follow the steps and you're done. If you think this is useful, that's it.